Hi, my name is Uzo and I am a contemporary artist. I am based in New York currently and I focus primarily on portraiture, pattern making, community building through products entering the home. Um, I originally started studying statistics in undergrad, but I knew it wasn't something I wanted to do full time, so I took a year off and I would just come back and paint to decorate my home and I would post it online. And just the support I was getting online was what pushed me to start exploring painting. So I would say I've been creating for six years now. I have two turning points right now. The first turning point was for me during COVID. Um, COVID was a time for me to build not only my art, my following, and also my network. And um, the time because everyone was home and people were getting tired of looking at the same type of home was give me the avenue to be able to sell more prints and more works. And so it hit me, I was able to expand into a multitude of products as well too and kind of shoot for the sky. And then my second um, point was my recent show in New York. Um, that was my first show that allowed me to be able to embed and build and turn one of my works essentially into an interactive home. And so this being able to interact and create products and create a full user experience through the idea of art was a, is a very big step for me and it's going to be pushing the tra trajectory of where I go moving forward. I would say one of my greatest influences is definitely David Hockney, not from his styles but actually because he never limited himself to just one style and so just following David Hockney and where he is right now it's completely different from what he did 20 years ago and so that has constantly pushed to me that Everything and everything is in eras. You don't have to create one specific style and you can explore different things that all tie around one specific um, idea. Coming from a very STEM background, I am very technical, not with the works, but with, be, with how um, the color composition is and everything is linear. So when, for example, I paint these works, it's always, I know this color starts first and it's, the buildup of it is very technical. My works, sometimes people look for a deeper story, but sometimes the technicality of it and how I'm putting these colors together is what is creating certain emotions. If I'm using reds, I'm using reds for a reason because I want to invoke a certain emotion. And so that kind of explains more of my process of how I pick colors out. Sometimes I will look like Architecture Digest and I will love the sense of the home and I'll use colors from it and to create a painting. And when you create that mood that you got from a specific landscape and bring it to a painting, it eludes that same thing and that allows it to enter multitudes of different varieties of home and exude that exact same feeling. This time, I typically do neighborhood pieces, but this time I wanted to touch upon the idea of where I am and where I come from. And so in the far left, you will see a scene. This is Delta. And the next one is New York, which is where I am right now. And then this is a self-portraiture. And in this self-portraiture, I, um, I took the idea of the woman and her shape and I put them back in these pieces to add myself back into these works. And so that was the whole concept of this, of this but just also showing the idea of community. And community is why I am where I am. And so I just wanted to showcase that through these works. Yes, I actually do. Because I don't limit myself to just a canvas, um, it also presents in the products that I create as well too. And sometimes it's really fun how, for example, if I want to, if I have a show in a specific way, I'll see people come back in with these products that I've created but I will put Easter eggs and put it back into this pieces. So it really drives in that whole feeling, the direction of home and community and talking and conversations. Um, I didn't start in the fine art world. I started with product making. And the whole idea of user experience try, comes back into my works because I got to where I am because of the support of just people who can only afford the smallest of items, $20 prints. The, so, and I never want to lose that community because it comes in numbers and with everything I do, they support it and also to push the idea that as I continue and figure out things, I'm also going back and, and talking openly about my process because I'm doing this alone. No one is really doing it at this capacity that I'm doing it at. So, um, I just try to be transparent as possible to just the community that I am. And so, if I fall, they're there to see it and they're there to also help me as well too. I just want to create joy. You know, some people focus on pain and different aspects of community and I think the main standing emotion is black joy and trying to show joy through um, blackness you know and anyone can be able to relate to that it's not you shouldn't be focused on the color of your skin you should be focused on the emotions these people are the emotions all these collective works are creating for you and your home and who you are as a person and connecting with these a success I feel like I am already a success your success is doing what you love
You know, I wake up every day just happy to, even if I'm tired, I'm happy. Like I don't have, I don't second guess myself or what am I doing? I'm just, I'm just being, being at just myself, yeah. Um, I mean, art is everywhere. Um, I think I always try to say art and design go hand in hand. Art and design is creating these posters, it's creating the media you consume, it's creating the clothes you're wearing, you know? It all comes, you know, full circle. And it also, you also have social artists where that's gonna highlight a lot of things going on right now that we're not really seeing that we are living in history and these are gonna be studied for years to come. Um, for example, when I make, I've made like a wallpaper before and I've added a notion called soft life and it's such, it's so crazy how such a terminology that was used within my culture is now coin everywhere you know they use it on TikTok and just showing the idea so if you were to ever come back years later and see that wallpaper you know specifically around that time period it was at so yeah I'm gonna say the self-portrait that you is my logo and I've had this you with me and I've carried this you six years ago it was I used it to make I was trying to make a bag but it didn't work but I just kept this you on me and I forgot I had this patch. I forgot I had it, you know? And so as I was painting this and I was piecing it together, I hadn't done, I was good. the plan was to hand paint a U. I just like, I was cleaning out and I found this little scrap U that I made, that I had made um, six years ago and I just placed it and it fit perfectly, you know? And I literally, you know, it's just showing how, like, so it's a self portrait and I, th that U is, I put it in a painting and that U has, that thing has followed me for six years now and I put it into the work. And I essentially use, and I was planning, I essentially use all the colors in the U and brought it out into this portraiture. I think the most hard part is being intentful with what I create. You know, why am I creating this? As I paint it, why, why, why? What does this add to it, you know? Does this need to be made? You know, and so I think that's the hardest part because especially as you spend hours, months creating something, you're thinking like, should I just stop? Like, should I just finish it and see, see this painting through? You know, so I think that's like the hardest part about it. Um, and I would say my suggestion or advice to tackle that is to plan it out. I was in a small, like, you have to create a draft, you know, create what you're doing, plan all your colors, plan what you want to do. And also if you get tired or you have an artist block, create, do something else. Sometimes don't let me just, don't just do a canvas. Sometimes something as simple as tufts in the rug, doing crochet, doing something else that utilizes your hands and brain in a different matter, makes you come back to pieces. I've come back to pieces that I made three years ago and then I've created them again. Like for example, I have a coat pattern and that coat, I took a photo of an aerial view in New York and I had it like from 10 years ago and I didn't know how to do patterns yet and I would always come back to it. I didn't know what to do with this photo. I just liked the concept of this overall aerial view and as I started to learn different skills, I came back to it and I said, I'm gonna make a coat. And I made the pattern and I turned it to a coat. And then now if you're in New York, I mean, this time you're gonna see a lot of people wearing these coats now. So it's just really cool how things, sometimes just take a break and it's okay to take a break. You're gonna come back to it, you know, even if you're in your head, so yeah. These colors and everything, I just wanted to hit you in a way that you get an emotional feel from it. Like you're just happy to be here and be able to witness it. Typically I used to go to um, gentrified neighborhoods that used to have a multitude of di diversity, but are now gentrified and they only have one specific race and one specific class there. And so what I've been doing with these past works is I've been putting black people, you know, and just showing culture and bringing vibrancy. It's also like adding color and creating vibrancy back into these neighborhoods that previously used to be that, you know, and just bringing it back in. The biggest lesson I have learned, you have to believe in yourself, honestly. Like, sometimes, and you have to also, I think the biggest lesson is to not only know how to paint, but know everything surrounding why you're painting. Know the administration of it, know everything in the back end, because that's how you protect yourself as an artist, because the art world is ran off artist exploitation. And so as long as you're knowing and understanding how it runs and what it is, you know what to do to move forward and how to protect yourself. Because I'm a black woman, at the end of the day, we are tend to be one of the most disenfranchised. And so being well knowing about not just the painting, where things come from, why things are happening, is the, one of the most powerful things you can do.